This video is brought to you by Soundcor. One of the most interesting thing happened this year is truly open, truly wireless earbuds that's like small speakers attached to your ear. But like any earbuds without ear tips, pumping enough bass is always a challenge. But then Soundcore has made some little bass monsters here. In short, these give you more bass than any bone conduction or open earbuds you can find today. And that's not the end of it. There are so many great features like detachable neck band to IPX7 water resistance. So it's a really exciting one and let's get into it right now. Selamat pagi! Good morning everyone, Kenneth here and welcome to my product showcase of the Soundcore Aerofit and Aerofit Pro. I've been testing these for more than a month now and I'm super excited to share them with you. But as always, everything said in this video is my own honest opinion. My full disclosure is down in the description below and also where you can find a link to get these as well. So let's get started and talk about the best Soundcore has in store, the Aerofit Pro. And I wanna start the conversation by talking about the price. At 170 bucks, these definitely don't come cheap, but so do all open earbuds in the market today. In particular, these shock open fit that I got a chance to try out. So I'll have a little comparison to it later. One thing I can say for sure is these Aerofits are a better buy than the 10 bucks more expensive Shox Open Run Pro. That bone conduction earbuds, I just don't understand why people get it. It's very quiet. When you crank it up, they'll vibrate you like a head massager, but then I still see them quite a bit. So there's apparently a market for it. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think of bone conductions in general? Getting back to the Aerofit Pro, I see it as a premium open earbuds with all the bells and whistles 2023 could offer. Things like 14 hours of battery life, multi-point connection, nice physical button control here, and heck, even LDAC is here. And as always, you are in control of all these settings in the Soundcore app. And here, I wanted to highlight two things. Firstly, because you can use this as a neckband style earbuds, we'll get to that in a minute, by default, three seconds hold will always power the earbuds on and off. This limits you to customize single tap and double tap only, so you have to make compromises. But here's what mine looks like. It's pretty good, but as usual, you can set different controls when using them individually. And so far, it's been reliable. The location of the button is very natural and they click quite nicely. Moving on to the most important part, which is the sound quality. You might want to avoid customizing the EQ because it messes with the one main thing you want to buy these earbuds for, and that's the bass. Change the EQ to anything but the default Soundcore signature and you'll see a mark drop in sub bass presence. And in this open ear form factor, the inability to adjust the EQ below 100 Hz sticks out like a sore thumb because maxing out that lowest EQ just doesn't do it. You will get a mid bass boost, but not the sub bass presence, which resides around the 20 to 60 Hz. And I know the earbuds can do it because the default EQ slams. But well, the good thing is you don't really need to customize the EQ because these out of the box sounds pretty good. The bass is definitely the star of the show. It's very powerful. Even when listening at lower volume levels, around 20 to 40%. This really surprised me when I first listened to State of Grace by Taylor Swift. No other half in ear or open earbuds I've tried so far could give you these thick bass notes and drum hits. And then we move on to the sweet spot volume level, which is going to be that 60 to 70% you'll start to feel the earbuds are really pumping out that bass to the point where you can start to feel them vibrate. And if you shine a flashlight, you can see them, you know, moving. That's so cool. But naturally, being an open ear style earbuds, the people sitting right beside you can start hearing your music at this volume level, but it's not any worse than you know, normal half in ears like the AirPods or Galaxy Beans or this Phil CC Nano, which is great. Should you need to increase the volume above 70%, you'll start to feel the only thing getting louder is the mids to treble. This is simple physics and we see the same thing happen in small portable speakers, for example. So at those maxed out volume level, I don't recommend it for music listening, but it's very useful if you came across a quiet podcast or YouTube video. And I actually find maxing it out a lot for phone calls and online meetings too. So now it's obvious that the bass is the star of the show here and the sound signature is very warm. So if you talk about genres, it's less suitable for rock, acoustic and softer songs. But of course, you know what genre makes these earbuds shine, right? Yep, that's the hard hitting beats of electronic, 
dance and pop music. It's the sole purpose why these are tuned the way it is, which made it an open ear workout buds like no other, whether you're running or doing any sports or just working out in the gym, these lets you enjoy that bass while still being completely aware of your surroundings. Listening to How Will I Know by Clean Bandit, again, I would love a tad bit more vocal presence here, but overall, it's still very fun and very enjoyable tuning. But then we get to songs like Make You Say by Zed. Just wait until the first beat drop at 52 seconds mark and oh my god, it's a really fun experience. Again, I cannot emphasize how it sounds like you stuck a subwoofer in here. And yes, the Aerofit Pro makes listening to Skrillex Bang Rang an incredibly fun time. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how these Aerofit Pro sounds and you see it completes the workout butts roll with one very unique feature. This included detachable neckband. This neckband is adjustable and it makes the already secure fit even more secure. Although after an hour or so, you start to have some discomfort on the top of your ear here because the neckband is pulling it backwards. What is a worth trade-off considering you really can't get this off no matter how crazy you move with these on. And then for daily use, you just detach the neckband and I can wear this for practically the whole day long. But then again, I did start having some discomfort at the top of my ear but that's only after extremely long period of wearing, like six hours and above, but it's not too much and it's relieved easily by taking it off for a few minutes and then you can just wear it back again. Now with 14 hours of battery life inside, you can also just leave these buds connected as a neckband earbuds. This would still have more battery than the 10 hours playtime of the Shox Open Run Pro and the three second hold to power on and off works perfectly here. So really battery life wise, you never have to worry about it because together with the case, you'll be charging these once every two weeks or so. It's a freaking beast. Build quality wise, the earbuds are IPX5, so sweat won't be an issue. And the whole earbuds is made from a soft matte material that feels nice when worn. But if I could nitpick on something, it's the writings and logos scattered around the design. I actually like the more plain looking Aero fit here, but fortunately, they don't stick out too much when you're wearing it, so it's not that big of a deal. Talking about the charging case now, this is also one thing that surprised me because I came from the Open Rock Pro here, which I thought was already a small enough case for an ear hook earbuds, but this is so much thinner. It becomes something that you can pack in a small sling bag or pocket it perfectly fine while having three more charges extra, totaling close to 50 hours or so. And of course, we got this pairing button that doubles as a way to open the lid and then you get these super cool LEDs. It's just, I love it. Now, as I promised, let's compare this to the Shox Open Fit, which I had a chance to test in store. And I have two main differences. Firstly, the sound and that bass. Hands down, the Aerofit Pro is the winner here. Shox just didn't reach as deep, although I have to admit it has the edge when it comes to vocal presentation. So it comes down to what you need more. And secondly, the battery life is pretty much cut in half for both the earbuds and the case. To be fair, it comes with a smaller earbuds and case, but these are still very pocketable and still very thin anyway, so I don't see a reason why I should take any less. Okay, now let's talk about the second earbuds that is also very exciting to see. This is the standard Aerofit that goes for 130 bucks, and it has a very unique feature set that could be the perfect daily driver earbuds for most people who don't focus too much on just workouts. At only eight grams, these earbuds are as small and lightweight as the Shox Open Fit. And likewise, the charging case is unbelievably small and thin. But unlike the Shox, these packs more battery with 11 hours of playtime on the earbuds and almost four more charges in the case, totaling up to like a little bit more than 40 hours now. So I really still charge this once every two weeks and I'm using them quite a lot. What I love best on these earbuds are the fully IPX7 waterproof rating. Basically, you can't be sure that they'll survive no matter if you go under the rain or take it to shower heck even accidentally wash it in a washing machine and if you ask yes i did take them to the shower the controls might get triggered sometimes with the water but it's not too annoying what's more of a concern to me is because the speakers are open they could get muffled and blocked by the water but that's just the nature of open earbuds you just play a water eject tone in youtube and you can clear it up instantly. Okay, with those main features aside, let's get down to the differences between the Aerofit and the Aerofit Pro. And first of all, the sound quality is actually a downgrade from 16 millimeter to 14 millimeter driver. And this makes all the difference in the bass, making it just sound 
on par with the competition, similar to the Open Run Pro here or the Shox Open Fit, but still we have that base focus tuning and less pronounced mids brought over from the Aerofit Pro. But since it's not too rumbly in the sub bass here, you can just change it and EQ it to your liking. Also, there's no LDAC or spatial audio here, but that's not too bad considering the most important feature, multi-point connection is still here, just you have to activate it in the app first. Otherwise, the controls are touch-based now instead of a physical button. I like the more subtler design here and there's no neckband attachment, so the whole gesture is actually adjustable. It doesn't turn off the earbuds now. It is customizable along with single and double tap, which is perfect. I like the beep audio feedback every time you tap that lets you know you've registered correctly and it's quick to respond to, so no complaints right there. As far as comfort and fit goes though, since these are lighter, they are actually much more comfortable on the ear and doesn't hurt at all when worn for the whole day long, like literally. One potential problem I have to say is they might not stay as well as the bigger brother. For example, on my right ear, they fall off quite easily with moderate amount of movement. So if you can try it out in store, I recommend you do so before buying because everyone's ear shape is different. Finally, for both the Aerofits, I have yet to find an issue with pairing, audio dropouts, or connectivity in general. And while there is no gaming mode, daily music and video use is perfectly fine. And last but not least, I found both Aerofits here to have great microphone quality and noise reduction, just like what you'd expect from Soundcore. And really for the past month, I've been using these a ton for my online meetings and calls. Let's just check out the mic test right now. Okay, welcome everyone to the microphone test. Here we are with the Soundcore Aerofit Pros. This is what it looks like. What do you think of the sound quality? I think it catches my voice very, very well. And you know, this is an indoor setting with nothing going on, but still it's very full sounding. So now let's switch over to the standard Aerofits and we'll see how it sounds. And right now, here we are with the Soundcore Aerofit. What do you think of the sound quality? And this is what it looks like, the fit. And it's very comfortable, sounds very nice in my personal opinion. But let's go outside now and we'll see how they perform with the outdoor noise. Right, here we are with the Soundcore Aerofit Pro outside. And what do you think of the sound quality? Quite a lot of motorcycles and vehicles passing through. So yeah, what do you think? Can you still hear me very clearly? Let's move on to the Soundcore Aerofit now, and we'll see how it sounds. Okay, now we are with the Soundcore Aerofit, and what do you think of the sound quality? How does the noise cancellation going on here? Again, with the same exact condition, except with a little bit more cars and motorcycles passing through, so that's interesting to see. But anyway, that's pretty much it for the microphone test. Let's move on to the phone microphone now, and we'll conclude the video. Okay, so now we are recording with the front microphone of my phone. What do you think of the sound quality? This is what it actually sounds like. But yeah, this is actually quite a very noisy road that I just listened to the recordings and they all are actually very, very good. So that's pretty much it for the product showcase. I hope it was helpful. Let me know down below if you have any questions. You can get them right here or I'll put all the links in the description and in the comments below. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.